and we are live hello everyone we have no joiners yet give people a little time to join on here Good evening to my Foxies. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm gonna give everyone a little time to join us here. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring them up both on my, on my sales. Seven oh two. I'm gonna give them till about seven oh three, seven oh four, right? And we'll get started here. Good evening, Foxies. How are you all? I'm going to give uh, Foxies and Foxies a little time to join in and we'll get started here momentarily. I hope everyone had a great day today. It's Friday Eve, ready for the weekend. Here in Houston, we're getting ready for the trail ride and the rodeo that's getting started. So, okay, we're going to do the countdown here, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. And hello, good evening, everyone, to all my foxes and foxies out there. Um, welcome to the Silver Fox Sonia podcast. I am finally back. I missed y'all. I missed y'all so much this evening while preparing. I got a little nervous because it's been so long. But uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're coming back. And I would like to introduce to everyone a very, very dear friend of mine. We were actually supposed to come and uh, do a podcast in December, but I got sick with COVID, was down for a month. Um, and it just took me a little while to get my energy back. I was really, really fatigued. But uh, thank God I'm well. I made it through it. Yes. And I'm back. So on this evening... I would like to introduce you to one of my foxes. He is a dear friend. We've been friends for, ooh, since what I say, 95, 96? Yeah, long time. Mr. Waddell. Long time. And uh, he, he was a friend that started off, well, no, actually, he was my mechanic. <laughs> started off as my mechanic, became a friend and a little brother. And we've been friends and he's been by my side. I've been by his side all of these years. So. I'd like to introduce to some that don't know him, Minister Moses Wydell. Uh, like I say, he's my little brother. I helped him go through stuff in his marriage. He helped me through some 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 valleys in mine. Yeah. And, and now through this dating thing that I'm doing, he's always there to support me and nudge me and be like, nah, sister, nah, <laughs> not that one, not that one. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Minister Moses Waddell, and we will be discussing um, 
are you men? Are you a just man? And ladies, are you looking for a just man? And before he speaks, I'd like to say that uh, he taught this Sunday school class and he talked about Moses and Mary and Moses being a just man. So th this, this is why I've brought this to the podcast, to the Silver Fox Sonia podcast, because he hit some things that just really, you know, pierced me and made me think. So uh, we have Minister Moses Waddell. How are you, Moses? Hi, big sister. How are you? Good evening. Hey. Good evening. Oh, excited to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Moses Waddell, uh, longtime friend of my big sister, Sonia. And believe me, it's been a brother and sister relationship. You can actually have a brother and sister relationship, a true brother and sister relationship without the hanky panky. <laughs> and so uh, my wife and I, we are ministers where I'm minister. She's backing me up. We are leaders in the marriage enrichment class at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, where we've been serving there for many years. Dr. Edwin A. Davis is my pastor. And we love the, the institution that God ordained, which we call marriage. And we want to touch today on a few issues concerning a just man and actually what is a just man. And I'm excited to share a little bit about my thoughts on a just man. And as uh, Big Sister said, uh, we gonna, when we get started, we're going to use the context or use the story. Everybody's familiar with Mary and Joseph and the story of um, how Jesus came into the world. But we'll, we'll talk about that. But I'm excited to be here. Um, yeah, we want to yeah. we want to talk about reality. And we know that reality affects every facet of our lives. So now, sister, you leave. Yes. The <laughs> so, okay, I got the question when I posted the actual title of this episode, A Just Man, and ladies, are you looking for a just man? Can you give us the definition of what a just man is and tie it to the scripture that you gave in that Sunday school sermon about Moses being a just man? Of course, biblically speaking, a just man is a man uh, after God's own heart. David was a man after God's own heart, of course, but he made some mistakes. A just man, uh, we've heard the cliche fall seven times. What makes him just? He falls, he dusts himself off, and he gets up and he continues to pursue a lifestyle that pleases God. A just man's aim is to please God in every facet of his life. He doesn't remain, if he finds himself in a, in a bad situation, he doesn't stay in that bad situation. Why? Because his heart is after God. We've heard David was a man after God's own heart, a just man is going to find a way to remain just. And basically what it is, he's in line with God's will concerning his life. The Sunday school lesson, we talked a little bit about the story of Jesus being, uh, well, before Jesus was born, everybody's familiar with the story about Joseph and Mary. Um, um, uh, Mary was found with child. And I like to illustrate a little bit. Can you imagine, brothers, you being out of town or you being away from your wife and you get some news that she's found with child? Can you under, can you can you only imagine what was Joseph thinking at that time? Hey, I haven't been with my wife and you mean to tell me she's with child? Wait a minute. We got some major misunderstanding going on. And so, brothers. When you find yourself in a situation uh, with your wife, or let's say soon to be wife, um, and, and, and that, that's a serious issue coming up, knowing that she's carrying, uh, let me say another man's child, but here 
Mary was carrying the Holy Ghost. She was she was carrying uh, uh, soon to be Christ. But Joseph pondering in his heart, and I put myself in Joseph's shoes just for a minute. Man, how would I feel? My wife come tells me that she's pregnant and I had nothing to do with it. The Bible says Joseph was a just man. Now, Joseph was a man just like you and I, brothers. You know, hey, no, 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 we're not going to have this. Some brothers, some brothers uh, would probably say, hey, listen, it's going to be 12 dead and 15 wounded. And it's going to make the evening news. You come telling me my goods has been tampered with by somebody else. And now there's evidence. Oh, no, we got problems. So can you can you can imagine what Joseph is going through, pondering, hey, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this. He's probably consulting uh, um, his spiritual father. So what am I going to do in such a situation like this? Brothers, what will you do? Your wife, your soon to be wife, let's say, is found with child. What will you do? And now you being a just man, let's say that you being reared in the church, you being you being instructed how to handle bad situations. You know, when a fireman or a police officer, they train and they train and they train. And when they get to a situation or when they get into the heat of the battle, then their training should kick in. Well, I got to tell you this here. Training is good. But when reality really hits you, yeah. hits you, hit home, it's personal now. What are you going to do? Joseph being a just man, the Bible says he wanted to put her away privately. Wow. He loved her. Absolutely. He wanted to protect her, even though he would be hurt, even though the love of his life, he would no longer be able to see her and to, and to uh, cohabitate with her. That's powerful. And, and, and how was he able to make that decision or, or sustain himself under a tremendous amount of pressure, make it a major decision such as that. Joseph, mind you, was a just man. And, and that being a just man allowed him to handle the situation as he was trained to do. And, and brothers, when we get in situations with our spouses, we should fall back on our training on how to handle our wives. There is a difference between a just man and an unjust, and an unjust man. Sister, you wanted to interject. Yeah, so I was going to say, okay, so in so an example today um, that you could give, what example could you give other than the woman you're to marry is expecting a child? Mm-hmm. An, an example other than that, expecting a child to where he could be a just or an unjust man in, a, in, in the example. Well, the just man is going to act accordingly, even though the pressure is weighing upon him. You know, you remember when and a prime example of this, when, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane and, and, and he knew that he was about to die. He was under a tremendous amount of pressure so much that his soul was exceedingly sorrowful even unto death so much he was in so much pressure that the blood uh, uh mixed with the uh hit no the yes the blood began to mix with his sweat meaning that the capillaries beneath the skin began to burst and mix and fall off him he was under a lot of pressure yet and still he said not my will but thy will be done he maintained his position and when a, when, a, when a just man is faced with issues, it's going to affect him. It's going to bother him. But remember what I said, a just man falls seven times. What makes him just, if, even if he falls, he gets back up and he gets back on that right pathway. So the grade point average in the classroom for the just man should be 99.9. .9. Most of the time, he should be handling situations according to the will of God, especially when it comes to marriage. So everyone that listens to this podcast, so when it comes to marriage, that's one. But what about when it comes to singleness in your dating? 
Wow. Improving yourself to be a just man so that lady knows, okay, this is a just man. Absolutely. Good question. Great question. Well, if you're a fisherman, every fisherman knows you want to catch catfish, you want to catch a red snapper, you put the right bait on the hook. But brothers, why would you go fishing? For the purpose of catching? For the purpose of, of, of you catching that fish, getting that fish and cleaning that fish? I'm going somewhere. Or are, okay. you catching, are you okay. catching that fish and simply bringing it back home as a trophy and putting it in your fish tank? See, there's two different reasons why fishermen go fishing. He goes fishing to survive or he go fishing just to trophy fish. There are some brothers go fishing just to trophy fish. You see my point? Nine out of ten, the just man, he's going to go fishing for survival. Bible talks about when, when, when God created Adam and Eve, he told Adam, he said, listen, brother, it's, it's not good for you to be alone. I'm going to create you or help me. The just man is going to go fishing for survival. He's going to go fishing for that right help me, and he's going to put the right bait on the hook. You got two guys out here fishing. Notice that. You got the just man and you got the unjust man that's fishing. Okay. The unjust man is going to fish and catch to soothe and to satisfy his be sinful behaviors. The just man is going to catch so that, yes, his satisfaction will be met, but within the confines of God's will. That's, okay. two, that's, two, that's two different reasons why the man go fishing or go catching or looking for a woman. I would suggest, brothers, uh, if you're going to, if you are you interested in a BMW, why would you go to the Toyota dealership looking for a vehicle? You see my point? I would tell everybody, if you're going to date, date to marry. Don't date to sport. Don't date to have another notch under your belt or to simply satisfy your sinful desires. And ladies, same thing. Same thing, ladies. Uh, uh, um, the body that we in-house that God has given us is the temple of God. It's the, it's the what we call the Imago Dei, the very image of God that we in-house and in, in body. And we need to treat it with much respect. Ladies, if you're interested in, 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 in Big Sister and I, we talked about this all the time. She know I'm the, I'm the preacher police. Yes, he is. If you're interested <laughs> in dating, Make sure, make sure you're dating for a purpose and make sure you're dating for a right purpose. Uh, most people date for satisfaction. They want, they, they want, they don't want to be lonely. They want to have somebody by their side. And um, uh, some people date just to sport, just to play around. But go ahead. So what's wrong with dating if you really don't want to get married? Some people date just to have company, to go to dinner. Um, not necessarily saying that the man is, you know, are they just hooking up for a, uh, what they call it? A, um, a hookup. A hookup. Not a. Yeah, not necessarily saying it's a hookup, though. Maybe you just want to date. You don't want to get married, but you want to date because you want the, the um, company of the opposite sex. Okay, so you, you, and we, can we be real about it? You mean dating, not a booty call. We're going to talk about that too. I, I'm no, not, no, not a booty call. Okay, we're not, okay. Nothing wrong with dating. But know this, if you're going to date, you need to do it, of course, again, within the confines of God's will. If you're going to date, hands off. So, Okay, so everybody that's on this podcast may not understand the confines of God's will. So what are the confines of God's will? And that, and that will go back to the reason why you're fishing. There's a reason why you're dating. You're dating for something. Okay. There's a, there's a reason why you're dating. Again, you're dating either to satisfy and to soothe desires, right? So guess what? Everybody is dating to satisfy and soothe desires. There's an attraction that uh, the normal attraction is for a man is to, to be attracted to a woman. 
in the woman to be attracted to the man that draws that natural desire that God chemistry that God created. He, he created that 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 uh, chemistry. And so I can only imagine when when God got done uh, creating uh, Eve, Adam looks around and looks at bone and bone and flesh and flesh and, 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 and say, you know, you know what I'm saying? So so you attracted. There's a reason why you're dating. We're, we're all dating to get that satisfaction. But understand, you're gonna, I'm not gonna say, I'm not, my thing is if you're gonna date, let it be dating for a purpose, the right purpose. And let me let me use this and that. The Bible says this, what all that we do, let it be done for the glory of God, whatever it is, whether it be, okay. whether it be dating, whether it be singing, whether it, whether it be sporting, whatever it do, let it be done for the glory of God. So you ask yourself the question, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm single and I want to date, but will it cause me to go outside of the will of God? And nine out of 10, it will, because the physical attraction is there. And if you, and if you keep coming around physical attraction, temptation, which the Bible says flee from, run from it, Nine out of 10, you keep doing it, you're going to fall short of the glory of God. You see my point? So if you're going to date, if you're going to date, remember, there's got to be a purpose behind it. If you're single, okay. let me ask you a question, big sister. Okay. You, you single, my big sister, beautiful. What would be the reason why you would date? For me, I date to find my significant other. All right, great. To, to get data, to get information, to find out about them. Right. Um, you know, my desire is marriage. Um, okay, I've been divorced, what, going on 11 years? Right. Early in the divorce, I wanted the marriage like that. Now it's just like, I'm good. I'm at peace now. I desire it, but I'm not thirsty or parched for it. I'm good because I'm at peace. Right. Um, do I date? Yes, I go out here and there. Right. Um, but I do do it in the confines of the word of God. Right, right. And, and, and I like that because you, you've set the standard that, hey, I'm going to date. And then you, you said another standard, I'm dating for a purpose. I'm dating to find my significant other. I like that. You, that. You're searching for purpose where so many are out there just searching to have fun and just to be fun and game in hopes right. that if they roll a dice, they might get lucky and hit one or two. But in the process, why you, not you, but the person that's rolling the dice uh, test drive in the car before they're buying it. You, you see my point? And then this is this is what happened when when people um, date for a long period of time and there's no true guidance. They they might have two people might be dating and they might be dating for twelve months, two years, six years, or and they never marry. Mm -hmm. And I asked a brother in the barbershop, me and we was talking about marriage, and, and um, he said, "Man, we're not married. Man, we've been dating for six years." I said, brother, you've been test driving that car for six years and you're not sure you want to buy. I think you need to go take it back to the dealership and park it on the lot. And the mm -hmm. reason why I say that a man that has no guidance, has no purpose in his life, he's just wandering and wandering, he cannot lead that woman nowhere. A just man is like a, a, a heat-seeking missile. He, he's been programmed to find that one and when he finds that one, he locks her in and to marry her and hopes to please God in all that he does. So in the dating game, we want to go back to it. You're dating for a purpose, and that's to marry. Well, some folks say, well, I just want to stay single. I don't want to get married. Well, okay. That's if, it. If that's your choice, make sure you do it within the confines of God's will. Make sure the hanky panky is not going on. Make sure there's not that ain't gonna happen. 
and, and, and that's where we fall short at. That's where a lot of folks get comfortable. They, they say, you know what? I'm going to get all I can get. I ain't going to get married. I, I'm going I'm to milk that cow, milk that cow. I'm not going to buy the cow. But guess what? You're selling yourself short because you're not getting yourself ready for your significant other. And it could be a, the very real re reason why some haven't found their significant other. Prime example, baseball. You got you got the you got the um, the pitcher and you got the catcher. And guess what? What are they doing? They're throwing the ball back and forth to each other. They got gloves, anticipating the ball back and forth, back and forth. You have to anticipate God throwing the ball at you. So guess what? You have to get ready and be in position. A lot of times God is not gonna bless because we're not in position. Brothers, you looking for that good one? A lot of times you're not in line. So God probably say, hey, why should I bless you? And you outside of my will. Same thing with the ladies. Ladies, why should I bless you? And you keep giving up the goods to uh, 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 knucklehead here, knucklehead there. If, you, if we really want God to bless in our relationship, we must take the recipe, the recipe and the plan that he has put in place and say, God, listen, I'm going to follow your plan and I'm going to trust you. And when we do that, I believe by faith, God will line up that right mate to come together and y'all will join in holy matrimony. I believe God will grant the desires of our heart. Bible says this, we have not because we ask not. And, and, and none of us is perfect, but when you know better, you should do better. In my life, my, uh, we've been married now, by the grace of God, 22 years. And, and, and when I met my wife, uh, yes, I was a just man. And I'm, I'm going to give a great example of this. And I thank God I'm not too long. Huh? Uh, we moved in together. And we were not married. The mechanism on the inside of me, which was the Holy Spirit. See, see, if you're just man, you can't keep, keep sinning. You can't keep sinning. You can't keep the Holy Spirit bothered me and weighed me down so bad. I was in the bedroom and I was down on my knees and and then my and uh, my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife now, she said, Why are you crying? I looked at her, I had tears in my head. Hey, we we can't keep doing this. She says, What's going on? I said, We gotta honor God and what and, and what we're doing. See, we okay. got, a lot of us want to bring God into the mess, the sinful behavior. No, no. He don't step into your mess. He step, he's wait until you bring the mess to him. And so we married. We married due to the fact that I did love her, but I wanted to please God in what I was doing. That is a just man. An unjust brother, he's going to keep doing what he's doing. No regards for trying to please God. So how does that unjust man become a just man? Wow, great question, great question. Again, we are created in the image and the likeness of God. And, and by nature, yeah, we have that sin nature, but by nature, God has implanted, imputed in us a form of him as well to know right from wrong. The just man, can, it's simple, it ain't hard, it, it ain't, it, you don't have to go to seminary school to get it, the just man, wants to become a just man, fall down on your knees, my brother, and simply ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew the right spirit in you and give you a heart such as David had to seek after God and to seek after God. That's how, when you relinquish and say, hey God, I've been doing it, I've been doing it by myself and doing it my way all my life. And it's, it's, it's the wrong way, I wanna try your way. And that's when that that's when the unjust man becomes a just man, and then he does this, as as Paul suggests in the, over in the Bible, follow me as I follow Christ. So that unjust man gets out of his selfish behavior behavior now uh, uh, imputed with the Holy Spirit. He lines himself up with the Word of God, and that's how the sanctification process begins to turn that unjust man into a just man. And brothers, let me tell you, it's so crucial and critical 
that we get ourselves together so that we can lead that woman that God has for us. We need to line ourselves up. The world is so tore up because men, yes, men, Adam, when Adam fell short, God walks in the garden. He says, Adam, where are thou? He didn't say Eve. He said, Adam, where you at, brother? And so, and so we have to get ourselves right so that we will be able to lead our brides. And, 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 and when, when we do that, God will touch their hearts and get them right. Uh, some brothers in the marriage class say, man, my wife won't do right. My wife, my wife, my wife, wife. I'm, now I'm coming back to the single. My wife, my wife. I say, well, how are you living, my brother? How are you treating her? Well, man, you, you know, I, I, I raise my voice at it and then he even say, I even push it around. I say, okay. wow. Oh, wow. I say, I say, understand this, understand this. God is nowhere in that mess hearing your prayers. When a, when a just man lines himself up with God, God will remotely from heaven send a signal down to that wife's heart, touch her heart and cause her to fall in line when you are in line. Just man. And uh, sure. it's 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 been a, it's been some experiences, some experiences of some experiences. Matter of fact, I, I got a great experience last night. My wife and I we had a, a small disagreement last night. And um I was like, man, we gotta fix this thing, we gotta fix this thing, we gotta fix this thing. What and you I, do, Moses? What you do? I know you did something. What you do? And and and, and I went to bed, of course. I tried to go to sleep and I didn't sleep well because I knew things was undone. So my wife working from home, I was off today. I got down on my knees and I said, God, you know, I can hear his voice. Hey son, listen here. When you don't treat her right or when things are not right, I don't want to hear your prayers. Brothers know this, when you mistreat your wife, and I, I didn't mistreat her, but when you mistreat your wife, God does not hear your prayers. And I can back that up with scripture. I find it later and put it up there. But I couldn't rest because things were things were undone. So by me being the leader, the head, the thermostat of the house, I gotta fix this thing. And so uh, I got up, I prayed, I fixed her coffee, and I brought her coffee to her. And uh, I kissed her on the forehead. I said, "Hey, listen, I'm, I apologize. I handled that wrong. We're not gonna give the enemy play to to steal our day." And that turned everything right around. Brothers, being a just man, it means taking your pride, putting it in your back pocket and saying, hey, I'm sorry, let me fix this. We are the thermostat in the house. We control the temperature. So we have to make sure the temperature is comfortable for the wives. Talking about marriage, brother, let me tell you something. We should get a, a degree, yeah, a doctoral degree in studying our wives. Bible says, live with your wife in an understanding way. We supposed to be studying her so much. We know her every move. We know, we, and, and we, know, we know how she feels. We know what to do, what not to do. We know what to say, what not to say. And, then, and, and, and live with her in an understanding way. Know her better than she know herself. And then, and then this brothers, protect your wives. You, you protect her from friendly fire as well as enemy fire. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Friendly fire is you, brother. Friendly fire is you being in the house and not treating her right. Now, the enemy fire is those outside of the house trying to hurt her. So you got to protect her from yourself when you ain't right, and you got to protect her from those who are outside of your home. Wow. Love I never thought about it from yeah. inside and out. Yes, sir. You, that's, yeah. that's good. That's yes. good. So on the single side of that, too, I can say as far as a just man, like you said, he watches her. He studies her. And in my experience of dating as far uh, as a just man, I don't think they study. Because what they're looking for is not a wife. Right. Um, they're attracted to curves and mm -hmm. lumps and bumps. And to me, I see a lot of just wanting to go to the playground and right. just play. Right. 
And I don't know if it's because, like I say, they don't want to get married. There are a lot of singles out here. And I just heard in the message the other day that 44 mm percent -hmm. of people in America are single. Yeah. yeah. 44 percent. That's a high percentage. That's almost half the population is single. Pretty high. And not married. Wow. So, um, I don't, I, I don't think very many people really want to be married. And if they, if they want a mate, they don't consider marriage a necessity. Right, right. And 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 again, um, some brothers are so disconnected from divine intervention to where and sisters to where that that percentage that you brought up is so high they're not connected to get the right uh instructions they need for their lives and then some people <laughs> can't get along with nobody i mean some people can't get along with themselves they they get up in the morning walk past the mirror and see themselves in the mirror and say hey what you looking at and then there's an <laughs> argument in suit right there. They, they just have a bad disposition and a bad attitude. And if they can't get along with themselves, how is it that they can get along with someone else? And again, they can't, they can't. And, they, and again, there's a disconnect right there from divine intervention. It all plays on being connected to the power source and knowing the reason why you're here on earth, knowing, knowing God, it, it, it plays a part. So many people are disconnected from God. Uh, uh, big sister, and so therefore they're not looking for. They're not looking for direction. They're looking for a little fun, you know. The 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 the, the brother is looking for a good time, a good satisfaction, and if he can go back to his house or or uh, lay up at, at some uh, some lady's house, that's that is Netflix and chill. Absolutely, absolutely. But but you creating a Frankenstein. You creating a monster. It's all mm -hmm. you creating. You creating a false sense of what should be right. You, it's it's that's what it is. And next thing you know, you be, you you're together six months, two three years, and you're not married, and and you're not really getting along. Why? Because you have not put the right ingredients into the relationship. And some people will go along, as I stated, for a long time without marrying, just to you know, just to be comfortable. But you hear a lot of men, because you 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 called me a couple of weeks saying that, well, you've called me multiple times, I want to say twice, mm -hmm. regarding men stating that there are no women out here and that women are, what was the word that they told you, that women are, um, we're not ready, um, I don't want to mention no names, but I'm <laughs> trying to go back to the conversation we had. Uh, and it, that could be the case. That could be the case. Well, uh, there are ladies there, but they're not lining themselves up either. They're willing to play the game to get. Uh, matter of fact, there are a lot. Let's talk about this. There's, there are a lot of ladies who have a price. Yeah, they, they, they got themselves out there on the market for sale. And it's not necessarily on the, on the corner of Jensen or West Town. It, it could be it could be on the corner of Saks Fifth Avenue or Louis Vuitton and all that and, and uh, red bottoms and things like that and, and buying a car and buying this and buying expensive perfume. And, and, and they're satisfied right there without making a commitment. So when a lady puts herself up there to the highest bidder, or even the lowest bidder, because sometimes they bid, they'll, they'll, they'll go for the low dollar. That is a bad situation. That is a, a bad situation within itself too, where the ladies are just say, "Hey, listen, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting good. I'm good. I'm getting all this. He bought me this. He bought me that. He pay and my it, rent, pay my mortgage. Absolutely. So I, I'll give the goods up, but realizing you again creating." a Frankenstein, you're creating a mess. Anytime you leave out, anytime you leave out the word of God and his principles for our lives, we are creating a mess and it always come back to bite us. 
And sister, true. sister, you cook well, you bake well. My fam favorite cake is a German chocolate cake. And and great, great tasting cake. What if you decide to change the ingredients up on that cake? And you go and you begin to put different ingredients in that cake and it will and it won't come out right after you're done baking it. It's no longer a German chocolate cake, it's something else. We must put the right ingredients into what we're trying to build. The right ingredients is the man lining himself up. The right ingredient is the woman lining herself up underneath God, getting ready to catch what God is about to throw at them. But again, okay. we, we, we're comfortable. We are not conscientious about God's plans for our life. We, hey God, I got, I'm going to do my own thing. This is me. Ain't no men, ain't no good men out here. Ain't no good women out here. I'm going to do my own thing. That's not true. There's a lot of good men out here, godly men, just men, and there's a lot of just ladies out here waiting for a just man to come in and say, hey, follow me. Follow me. And, and, and believe me again, I got to go back. Men, we are leaders. We are the atoms. And we need to line ourselves up with God, uh, serve him with a whole heart so that we will be able to lead our ladies. That's the best. Hey man, that's the, true. That's the biggest puzzle we men need to get ourselves together. So, and, and that's single men, that's married men, that's men as a whole. Um, so for, you touched on men that are, are married, what they need to do to be the thermostat for their home. Um, what do women, did we touch on women, what they need to look for when they're looking for a just man? So I'm going out on a date, okay? Right. What are some good examples of finding a just man? How will that woman know that that man is just? What will he do to give us that signal? You'd be like, okay, maybe he's one I need to play, play close attention to even if long before the date phone conversation ensues uh, uh you hear hey um you know you you get the name you got all that stuff where he works at um uh the biggest eye opener uh where you worship what church you go to and listen to how he talks about his worship time his time with god Oh, I go over to such and such church and I go every now and then and, you know, I just sneak in there, sneak out of there, you know. Not saying he's not a just man, but is he really focusing in on his assignment God has given him? You see, because because if he's not being taught, how is it he going to be able to lead and teach you? So on the date, on the on the. On the on the date, it's it's over the phone. Long before he 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 he, you guys go out to dinner. Uh huh. You want to hear his conversation on um, how many times he's been married, how old is he, of course, how many kids, but most importantly, you want to see what his spiritual mindset is. What if he doesn't go to church, but he has a relationship with the Lord? Okay. Okay. Well, that's another thing. That's another thing. We, we go everywhere else. We go to work mm. eight days a week, 24 seven. We go to the barbershop, beauty shop, nail salon. We go there. If a man does not worship on a consistent basis, and I'm talking about forsaking not the assembly, that's an eye opener. Because, because again, because again, you looking at this point in time in your life, ladies, uh, you don't want to buy a car off the lot and you got to go take it to the shop and rebuild the engine. Now, you want something already ready to go when you just driving off the, off the lot in that BMW, that Mercedes Benz, you looking good. That's what you want in a man, that he got things together. He, he, he's ready to lead you. You know, you, you, you don't want to have to get the car and, and soon as you drive off the lot, 
you know, the engine and, and they start running bad and all that kind of stuff. Those are the things you want to look for. You don't want to buy a lemon. Where is his mindset and his relationship with God? If it's lacking, guess what? He's going to lack with you. Not saying that it can grow into that, but you don't want to sell yourself short either. You Nobody wants to go and buy a lemon. No man wants a lemon woman and, and vice versa. See my point? So his first thing is this. Where is he getting his instruction from? Who is his Lord and who is his God? See, and, and, and if, he, if God if his, is his God and his Lord, that's an eye opening. I'm like, wow, it might. Okay. We, <laughs> you know, you, you, sit, you sit in the Mercedes Benz and his hands free driving and cruise control and all this. You know, we we might, might be a selling point. See, there's got to be a selling point when you're dating. And same thing with the man. You, 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 you examine the lady. She might got the, the curve, the bumps and the humps, and she, she might be, uh, what is that, 2436 uh, uh, Foxy Brown. She 20, might. 36, 24, 36. Don't no man want no 24, <laughs> 36, 24. She, she might be all that. But where's the mindset? Where's her relationship with, with who, who's her God? Who's leading her? Who who been who she, who she been uh, who she been talking with? Who she been mixing and mingling with? Is it her God? So chances are, boom. Now you on the phone. He wants to date you, and 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 and, and he talking about no God, no nothing, no nothing. That's a red flag on both ends of the stick. So what do you do when you have a godly man? that may just be off, you know, like um, very sexual, very um, suggestive. When you say, when you say very. So like, 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 like there's, there's a man that's interested in you, but he, there's a man interested in you. He's a godly man. Right. He he has God as his focus in the center of his life. Right. But yet his his I guess I could say his his weakness is really maybe women. It could be something else that's off. Do you give him a chance or not give him a chance? Because God is the center of his of his life and his walk. Right. Right. Well. When he has, you saying he has an issue with women. It, it could be anything. They're vice. Okay. So we, we as children of God, we still have our, our downfalls, our weak points. Um, what do you say to that person that, 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 that man is, he a just man, he a good man, but he has some faults. Right. We all have them. We all have them. But the flaws is does not master us. Now, you're dating. Let's say you you found a prospect, uh -huh. and, and things are clicking so far. Things are clicking so far, and and he wants to he wants to takes it to the next level. And I'm just okay, sensually and sexually. That right there, he has to say, "Hey, listen, I'm interested. I think you I." prime candidate for marriage it ain't easy to say but hey let's just wait that's just what it's going to trust me that's that that it's not impossible it's not impossible now to be real about it let's just say y'all do come together and y'all fall okay where do, where do you go from now where do you go from now that and let's just say both you guys uh, child of the king, both you guys have a desire to please God. Both you guys should stop and say, hey, listen, um, we're going to have to, what's the song, stop seeing each other like this. And and you are a candidate for marriage and y'all looking at, then that's when you begin to move in that area and say, hey, you know what? We want to please God. We want God involved in this thing from the beginning, from the go. So, 
uh, let's not put ourselves in these compromised positions. But Very few say, will do that. Very few. I was just about to say that the reality of that is very few, but it's, very few. But it's possible, and that's why I say you want to make sure that car is a great car before you drive it off the lot. Because chances are, if you guys veer off course, and remember again, that just man falls seven times, but he get up and he dusts himself off again, just as the woman. It's easy for you guys to get that plane after he hit turbulence to get it back on the course it needs to go and flying smoothly. But what if the lady gives in to a knucklehead or the man gives in to a, a she double? Let me say that. And then you, you got more to work with now. See, and then, and then um, that part of relationship is only set aside. That's why it's so critical. It's only set aside for married couples. Anybody that is having relationship outside of marriage are in violation. Violation. It's a whole bunch of people in violation. <laughs> it's a lot of in violation. Absolutely. Ma uh, and, 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 and sex is, is, is preserved for married couples, period. It was designed for that. It was designed. That's, that's why. That's why. The uh, Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. And to burn. Yes. And, 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 it's, it's, we, and we're here having this conversation because we want to encourage, we want to help. If you single and you're desiring to be soothed and satisfied, God help me to be a candidate for marriage. Get me ready. The ladies, men, get me ready, God. Let me line myself up so that I can receive my mate. I don't want to keep living outside of your will for my life. Because when you do find that right one and you've been going through all the rigor and more, all the hard heads and all the she doubles, when you do find that right one, there's going to be a comparison. You know, yeah. the she double probably could have worked it a little bit better and then, and then now you're trying to turn the just woman into the she double in, in a sense. You see my point? And, and and I, I, I tell the couples this, the reason why we, and we'll jump back on this single thing, but the reason why we share in the marriage enrichment class, our job is to encourage the couples, you can be married in a holy institution and still enjoy marriage. That's what True. we encourage. That's True. what we encourage. And trust it, you can be single and still enjoy the singleness and still be within the confine True. of God's will. But I tell anybody, if you're desiring marriage, ask God to get you ready to catch that ball, that ball that's going to be coming at you. And you line yourself up, begin to read, begin to hang around those who are married, begin to read and study what marriage is all about. And those who have been married and divorced, you, you've learned, we've all have learned from our ups and our downs. I was married in my first marriage. I learned from my ups and downs. And now I'm... Married 22 years now, I know the do's and the don'ts. And if you want God involved, you have to develop a, a genuine fear and reverence from God and what he says about marriage and dating, singleness. That is true. And Foxy's, he be on me all the time. Sonia, pray about it. Sonia, pray about it. I've been praying 11 years. God, doggone it, he ain't come yet. Come on, husband, where you at? Where you at? Come on, come on, sir. <laughs> and sister, I tell you, I tell you this through all the ups and the downs in your life, the hardships in your life. Uh, I keep telling you this God has something great in store for you, big sister. He, he does. I believe that. You, I believe are well, that. you are well rounded. I can truly say that you are a just woman. You are a Thank God you. woman. You feel God. Uh, you have your career together. You 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 are a mother. Look, Joshua, my nephew, I call him my nephew. You have done a marvelous job with him. Uh, all mm -hmm. when we talk, you either you either cooking or you working or you cleaning or decorating. You know, are you and the wife on the phone sharing decorating ideas or whatever? Are you helping or her recipes, recipes and so forth? But but I do believe without a shadow of a doubt, since God is getting that present ready for you 
And I do believe from what I know about Big Sister, you are lining yourself up in position to catch that ball. And when you get him, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Aww. I so, received that. Thank you. Stay in position. I'm uh, staying in position. Uh, and, and you know we're not going to put a price tag on ourselves. We're not going to sell ourselves for the highest dollar or the lowest dollar. Because I, I tell you this, you are a jewel from God. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and um, he's coming. He's coming. Brother, I, I, tell, I tell my sister all the time. She's a real well-rounded, beautiful woman, educated, smart. She's been through the ups and downs, and God is going to reward her faithfulness. Thank you, Moses. Thank you. And y'all, I did not pay him to say that. Trust me, I did not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, we coming up on an hour here, and we just wanted to give um, the foxes and the found. Foxy's the foundation of, you know, a just man, a just woman. We'll be back again. You want to come back next week, Moses, or the week after that? And, you know, we won't be as scriptural, but, you know, we, we got to give the foundation first, lay the foundation. Right. Um, come back in our next session and we can talk. If you have questions, you can ask us questions. Um, we'll give some of our stories, you know, even like, like you said, he, he's been married before. Right. Throughout our uh, what twenty five plus years of friendship, I mean, right. the first few years of our friendship, I was right. helping you and walking you through your marriage and your trials and tribulations and stuff you Absolutely. were going through. Absolutely. And then you know you divorced, single, got married again, right. and I was working with y'all with that. Amen. And then you know. Um, I don't know if y'all foxies and foxies that are listening, if y'all uh, followed 17 years of wife and 17 years of wife, mm -hmm. I talk about that friend that always calls me. He always knew like, sis, what's going on? Why he changed his number? What, what did, girl, no, nah, don't tell me he did it again. Again? Wow. What's up? That That's, that's this dude right here. That's right. him. He right. is that that friend that would always call my phone and I see his name on the phone. I'd be like, oh, what do you want? So leave me alone. How he know, Lord, why he calling me? Right. I'd be like, hello. <laughs> you got to keep saying. Y'all literally, I'd be on the other end of the phone like this, like. <laughs> <laughs> got to keep you on track with this. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so um yeah, we talk about we're gonna talk about singleness, talk about marriage. Uh good one topic I guess we can interject the next time. Uh um cell phones. Brothers, can you if you leave home from work and you accidentally leave your phone at the house and your wife is there, would you safely turn around or no, not safely? safely drive to work and say, you know what, uh, <laughs> I left my phone at home, I'm no problem. You know, can you actually do that? Or are you gonna break your neck, dive through the window and come in and get your phone? Uh, he gonna your, turn around and come get his phone. Your wife should be able, just in case you 30 miles out, uh, should be able to, if she needs to have the access to your phone, she should be able to have access to your phone. And if she cannot, there's an issue with that. And so that's another topic we can talk about in marriage, uh, another topic we can talk about is seeing this, uh, is um, uh, holding yourself. We can talk more about that holding yourself while you they don't want to hear about holding themselves. <laughs> it's a must, it's a necessary. Y'all want to hear about holding y'all selves? Y'all don't want to hear about holding y'all selves. Heck, now they don't want to hear about that. <laughs> you holding yourself like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, you tell. Wow. I'm crazy. I know. I know. Had a great time. Great time. Great time. Good conversation. Right. Good message. Um, yes. thank you for coming to talk and to share. Great. And y'all, I have to get him to loosen up sometimes because sometimes he he'll just get into that word and I'll be like, come on, man. Come <laughs> we'll on, man. With, 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 with <laughs> more reality more real life 
just like we yes. just more real life down earth well um maybe you got some questions what do you do if this scenario pops up how do you handle that what will you say real life issues and he's really good at giving that information like he stated he is the um he and his wife are over the marriage ministry at their church um and and they are capable of giving good information they they've been through a lot they've been through a lot and they've come through on the other side and i'm so proud to see how their marriage has flourished and how they both stuck in and did the work and you know they're going strong amen glory be to god amen wow so foxies thank you all for joining us and for listening in if you tune in later leave your comments i'll come back and answer and he may even see some of the comments that are on the um on the post but if you all could please do me a favor if you are so i i have two pages on facebook i have silver fox sonia i have silver fox sonia podcast <clears throat> these podcasts are public I have tons of friend requests under Silver Fox Sonia. I try to save myself. I, I want to save my Silver Fox Sonia for family and close friends, classmates, right. college schoolmates and stuff like that. So I had started accepting friendships under Silver Fox Sonia, but I'm going to move those to Silver Fox Sonia podcast because I'm missing some of uh, you know, of my special family events and pictures of nieces and nephews, especially since we've been in this pandemic, I don't get to see family as much that live in other states. So if you have friended me on Silver Fox Sonia and I have not accepted it, that is why I'm going through slowly and sending everybody messages. I'm personally typing you a message and say, thank you for requesting me. Can you please go over to Silver Fox Sonia podcast and follow on there. Um, I post some of the same things on both. Some stuff does not make it to Silver Fox on your podcast, but much of it will. So if you could please go over to Silver Fox on your podcast and follow me on Silver Fox on your podcast, that would be great. As well as I have a YouTube channel. Um, I have to get that up and going. And, you know, we I'm not doing this podcast for popularity to become famous anything like that it's just to share a story to give a message to encourage people to um you know just help you if you're going through the same type of situation right so um i would love for you to follow me on youtube so i can get start broadcasting from youtube but um i'm still a corporate working woman so i do that i do this and when i'm gone for a while it's not because I don't want to be here, but I just have so many other things going on in my life as well. So hopefully just the start of this here, this, you know, YouTube could be my next thing I do. I don't know what it, wherever God leads me, whatever he tells me to do, that is what I'm going to do. But I appreciate you all following um, your comments and just the friendship. So um, again, Silver Fox on your podcast. If you could go over to Silver Fox on your podcast, like if we really have not met and you don't know me, please go to Silver Fox on your podcast. Um, and as I said, I have hundreds of friend requests. I will be going through those little by little and putting notes on asking you to come to Silver Fox on your podcast instead of Silver Fox on you. So thank you in advance. I appreciate it. And Minister Moses Waddell, I thank you so very much for being a part of the conversation and coming and give us, giving us the word of God. Amen. Thank you so very much, brother. Thank you, big sister. And I love you. Love you you are welcome. Yeah, Josh, we say hi. I will do. I will do. And Foxes and Foxies will be back in the next week or two. Um, we'll try to keep it on Thursdays, but it all depends on our schedules. But uh, thank you so very much for listening in and following. Peace. Good night. Love y'all.